In today's video, we're going to take a look at object identifiers, a pretty awesome way to get unique IDs for objects in terms of classes and meta types. We'll do some examples in a playground. This is commonly used in dependency injection, so let's get started by dropping a like down below. Hit subscribe. You guys know the drill. Let's open up Xcode and start by creating a blank playground. We're going to creatively call this object ID, and we'll go through a few examples together to see the benefit of this as well as how to actually use it. So let me go ahead and bump up my font size here and we'll get started by creating a class. So let's say we have a class of person. It'll have a name of type string and we'll have a constructor on here that takes in a name of type string and just assigns it to that property just like that. So pretty simple so far, nothing too scary. We can go ahead and create an instance of this person and I'll use myself as the guinea pig here. And we now have a instance of a person. Here we can introduce object identifier. So let's say we wanted a way to get a unique ID for this instance of this person being me. We can go ahead and say my ID is object identifier and inside of here we can basically just pass the name of the instance which in fact is me so let's actually print this out to see what we end up getting and then we'll do a little bit more of a practical example and talk about why on earth you would need to use this and where the benefit uh, resides so i'll go ahead and just prefix this before i give it a run we'll hit the run button down here in my console let's see xcode would like to access my desktop apparently so let's say okay to that and we should see the output here momentarily if the playground decides to work, there we go. So we see that for me, we have an object identifier and in the parentheses here, it looks like we have a memory address, some unique ID. Let's create another instance to see that these are truly unique. So I'll say Joe here and I'll pass in a different string. And once again, I'm going to print out uh, the object ID. We'll say my ID. And this will be my ID too, and once again my ID too, and Joe. Go ahead and clear out the console, hit pause, hit run again. We should see two IDs, and if we try to do command C and F, we'll see that these are in fact different. The fact that we have two different unique IDs for two different instances makes sense so far. So let's see what the practical use case of this is. So in the world of larger and debatably more complex applications, we have a common need for dependency injection. Now, what that boils down to is class B might need a object that does some contract, some protocol via its initializer. It doesn't care what the concrete object behind it is. All it cares about is give me an object that does something. So let's actually mock out an example. So maybe we can call this API provider. We'll have a class that does this. And here we can say we have API providing with a single function on it. Let me just go ahead and fix up my typos providing. And maybe we'll go ahead and say this has a single function of fetch data. Doesn't particularly do anything fancy. And inside of here, we'll just say fetch data. And maybe we'll actually also have this return, perhaps a string so we can actually see something come back. And in this implementation, we're just gonna have this return some data. On this class, we're also going to have an initializer that we're not going to take any arguments into, and we'll make this API providing. Now, perhaps we have another class that's in another target, and we want to pass in this API provider. But this API provider resides in some type of network library, where we don't want to add a explicit dependency between this and, you know, the caller side of our code. So let's say we have a uh, class here and this is our service and our service needs to take in something that is capable of you know hitting the API and calling fetch data so what we do here is we're gonna pass in our provider but instead of it being the provider class above we're gonna leverage the protocol that we defined so this class doesn't know and it doesn't frankly care about what instance is passing in the actual, um, what instance is passing in the functionality here. All it cares about is that there is an instance passing in this functionality. And I gotta get rid of these curlies here as well. So now that we've got this, we get this question of, okay, how do we get, how do we create a dependency injection 
uh, framework to essentially be able to find that this instance, every time it's created, already meets the need of this protocol. So in other words, let's say this was a singleton, and bear with me, this example will make more sense momentarily. So let's say it's a single instance, we use a singleton, just like that, and we have this service class that we wanna pass it into down here. So traditionally in dependency injection frameworks, there's this concept of resolving in containers. In other words, it's another object that is responsible for finding you know, if I if the service class says, find me an object that does API providing, that other class will resolve it. So I'm gonna create a resolver here. And this resolver is going to have two uh, functions on here. And the first one is going to be register. We're gonna be able to register a function to do something. And the other one on here is going to be resolve. And resolve is going to be able to resolve something. So what the heck is registration and resolution here? So we're gonna say register a particular class, so I'll say a class, any class, and what we wanna do in here is we're gonna get the unique ID of this class and hang on to it in a map. So we'll say private var map, and this map is going to be of type object identifier, and it's gonna be any class like so. So we'll say we have an object ID, and we have a particular class that it maps to, and by default, this guy will be empty. So what we're gonna do in terms of registration is we'll simply get an ID from this class. So we're gonna say we want an object ID of this class, and if we wanna actually limit it to the type, in other words, let's say we pass in a UI view and we only want one ID for it, we can say type of a class. We now have this ID, and in our map, which is internal, we can simply say our map ID points to this object. Now, similarly, what we want to do in the resolve function is just read from the map and return. So how do we actually end up doing that? We're gonna say resolve T, which will be a generic, and here we're gonna say type, which will be T uh, dot type, just like so, and we're gonna return an instance of T. Now, it looks a little fancy, but it's not, I promise. What we are going to do is we're gonna say, give me the ID, which is in object identifier, not objective C, object identifier. Let me just copy and paste it from up here. I will say, give me an object ID, and what we want is for the type that we're already passing in. And assuming we have something in our map, we'll go ahead and return it. So we're gonna say return, map ID, because that might resolve to nil, since we might not have a registration, we're gonna return T optional, otherwise uh, as either you know nil or the thing that we want. Now, because this thing can be any class, we're also going to downcast to T, and we should get rid of the error that's telling us that we're not returning the proper type. So this class is basically our uh, you know, resolver responsible for registering a type to a particular ID as well as resolving it. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment this as DI dependency injection. So let's actually give this, uh, instantiate some of these and see it in action. So first and foremost, we're gonna create a resolver, which will be our resolver class. We just implemented right up above. The next thing we wanna go ahead and do is access this API provider. So we're gonna say that we want to register this API provider. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll say resolver.register, and we're gonna register API provider, and we're gonna register it uh, as the shared instance, like so. And the next thing that we want to, in fact, do is create an instance of our service. So let's see what error we have here, and let me resolve this first and foremost. So it looks like our register takes in any class, which should be an instance, cannot convert value of API provider to expect the type of any class. So what we actually want to do here is let's make this any object. And let's see if that will allow us to use it like so. So this will complain here and here we want to also say any object in terms of our map. And we should get rid of those errors, beautiful, like so. So we've gone ahead and registered our API provider and the next thing we want to do is we want to create an instance of our service. Now our service takes in a provider that is of type API providing. So from our particular resolver here, we can say if let 
resolver, rather we can say if let uh, instance, it's a better name for it, resolver dot resolve. And what we want to resolve for is essentially API provider uh, dot self. And we're going to want to downcast it as well as API providing. If we're able to find this in our uh, API resolver or our resolver in general, we can go ahead and pass in the instance here and we'll just print out uh, service dot and off of this, we'll call service dot provider and that fetch data. Let's see, we already have this guy here. So we can say uh, service dot provider and I believe it is fetch data. It looks like my autocomplete is not working because I've got a typo here. Let's see what the problem is. So looks like we are downcasting API provider to providing. And what it's telling us here is that, uh, let's see, implicit conversion, remove as, okay. We don't need this. We can get rid of that warning like so, hopefully. Looks like we'll have an error now. And let me get rid of this for a quick second and see what's going on. Okay, we should be rid of those errors. And on top, off of this guy, we should have a provider and be able to say fetch data. So let me go ahead and I know we typed out a lot of code. Let's run this, make sure it works, and then we'll go through all the code once more. So I'll give this a run and we should see some data printed out down here. So again, we're basically focusing on the object identifier and being able to register and resolve things based on the unique ID that is created for us. So we have this API providing, we have a concrete class that implements API providing that basically just returns a string and fetch data. We have a service that takes in something that is API providing. And the meat of this video is this resolver stuff down here, where we hold a dictionary internally with our object identifier, as well as some instance, any object. We'll register, you know, some class, any object, and it's an important thing to note here that this is a class, it must be an instance, we cannot use value types, no structs in this case. We are going to create an ID based off of the type of this class, and then we'll just hang on to it in our map. Now one important thing to note here is if we previously had registered something, we will overwrite it in this case. So one thing you might want to actually go ahead and do is you're gonna say guard that map add ID is nil. The risky thing here is if you don't add this guard, you might be actually nilling out an instance that's already passed down as a dependency to some other object. Moving along down, our resolve function basically will return a generic type of T, where we say the type will be T.type. Might be a little confusing if it's not familiar to you, I've got videos on generics. We derive a ID, object identifier, from said type and return from map something with that ID and we downcast it to T. Of course, this function returns T optional because either our map might be empty or we might just have a different type registered for this ID for some odd reason. Down here, we have actually instantiated our resolver. We register our API provider dot shared like so, as well as instantiate our resolver dot resolve for an API provider dot self. We basically ask, hey, give me an API provider dot self and once we resolve it we can create it in our service or pass it into our service i should say and then we just call fetch data off of the service now i won't go too far into it in this video since i feel like this video is already scatterbrained but we can also register meta types like a protocol what the heck does that mean so right now we're you know, directly registering down here, API provider shared. But what we could do is we could extend this resolver class here to allow registration of protocols and instances. So we can say register a class and we can say for a protocol and we can actually pass in that we want to register for a protocol dot type. And we can, in fact, register directly into the map for this protocol. And the beauty of that is, and the importance of that is, at the time of resolution, we can also say, go ahead and resolve, not a class or an instance directly, but we can say, give me something that is API providing. In other words, I don't actually know what class is registered to you know fulfill this functionality but i do know the only thing that i want is a class that is capable of you know fetching data which is what this 
uh, API providing interface is doing for us. And that's basically the fundamentals of how dependency injection works under the hood with most solutions. I'm going to be doing other videos to go you know, deeper into these topics. They're a little bit difficult for me to explain, but hopefully this wasn't too all over the place and y'all followed along. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. Drop a like if you haven't done so already. Hit subscribe if you're new here and you're into iOS, mobile, tech in general. Thanks again for watching. That's all I've got for you guys. Object identifier, pretty cool. Should start using it. See you guys in the next one.